Everybody, welcome back to Young and Wiped Up. This is Marcella. And I'm Gabby. And thanks for joining us for another episode. We are so excited for you to come back to this season. We have a lot of content on Patreon that you missed if you aren't already a Patreon subscriber. There's bonus episodes, blog posts, exclusive merch, printables, and we also do monthly video chats with our highest tier. So if you haven't already checked out and see what we have for you guys, as far as exclusive content, go to patreon.com forward slash young and wiped up. So you can see all the stuff that we have to offer. Also, if you didn't know already, we do have a YouTube channel where you can watch as well as listen to all the episodes. We've had a couple of seasons now that are recorded on our YouTube channel, and you can see the transition from us recording together to us moving away and now having to do um, virtual. <laughs> yeah. Which virtual we, episodes. we really appreciate you guys bearing with us as we work out the kinks with our audio production and our video quality and lighting and everything. We used to have like a super high production <laughs> and our, when we were still living together in the, in the same town. <laughs> so yeah. everything's a little bit clunky right now. And we've had a little bit of complaints of our audio quality changing. <laughs> Of the past two seasons and that is because we live super far away and our budget for this is like zero dollars so we are doing our best <laughs> and so thank yeah. you for sticking with us we are still working on everything and hopefully we're going to get marcella a light we're going to get her a better mic and we're going to try to figure out a better way so that we have high quality production value for guys for you guys again because earlier i was looking at some old content of ours and i was like wow the audio was so good it was so crisp so and now crisp. It's yeah. like video call quality and it's okay, but you know, it makes me sad. <laughs> yeah, definitely all good. right. So this week and also next week, we are going to be talking about engagement, preparing to be a wife, our experiences, things that we learned, things that we loved, things that we wish we did differently, and also just some general advice that we would give somebody that's either in the middle of pursuing marriage, if they want to get married someday and they want to um, cultivate virtues and skills of being a godly wife, or if they're in the middle of engagement and they're like, what am I supposed to do? I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> we're going to talk all about the, that this week and next week. And this week, we're going to be focusing on our stories, our engagement stories and our experience and how everything went with us. That way we can kind of give some perspective of how it went for us and things that we liked about it, things that we wish went differently before we give any advice to you guys. So we hope you enjoy this episode. And even if you are a wife, you should be cultivating the virtues of a Titus II woman and thinking about how you can disciple the younger woman below you and younger than you to be a godly wife and to prepare for that. So even if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm already a wife, none of this applies to me. This is good for Marcella and I, even though we're no longer <laughs> um, fiancés. That was a yeah. long time ago for or, both of us. Yeah, <laughs> or newly. <laughs> yeah, that now we're like thinking about we're going to be around people that are younger than us. And we have a lot of young and wifed up listeners that are either newly engaged or they want to be married someday. And so we wanted to do something for them. And also just for you guys to be able to think about how you can be discipling the girls that are younger than you. And yeah, so let's get straight into it. So Marcella, can you give us a quick, we've talked about our engagement stories before when we had our episode with the guys, um, mm -hmm. That was a long time ago. Very long time We're ago. going to be bringing our husbands back, hopefully next month or maybe the following month. Um, we've been, it's been highly requested to bring the husbands back, which is so funny. <laughs> um, but we 
um, talked about our engagement stories before, but I can't even remember what we talked about or when, and you're probably not going to go back and try to find that episode. So we're going to give you a quick little synopsis of our, maybe how, maybe just say like how long you guys dated before you got engaged. Just kind of like everything to give us a full picture. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Jed and I dated for a year and a half before we got engaged and then we were engaged for we had a seven month long engagement which I mean was okay like I don't know I do feel like it would have been better if it had been shorter but then thinking back I'm also like man that time actually really did fly by because of all the planning we had to do Mm -hmm. and like everything that needed to happen me moving you know into his place and like all this different stuff um so that was let's see we got engaged in the fall of 2016 wow that's a long time ago um and then we got married in april of 2017 so we're coming up on seven years now um praise god Um, amen (laughs) and (laughs) okay so as far as like i don't know but like how we got engaged, I mean, Jed was, like, he was raised very traditionally minded. Um, You know, he asked my dad to date me, first of all. Um, and we were also pretty young. I mean, I was 18 when we started dating, and Jed was about to be 20. And then he also asked my dad um, uh, to marry me, for permission to marry me. And my dad had some stipulations, which was that he had to, you know, have his own place and to um, be in his own uh, living situation. Because I, which to me makes a lot of sense. Like if you cannot prove to uh, this girl that you're going to marry her father that you can take care of yourself. Like how is that supposed to work if you're like bringing her under your headship? So um, I thought it was very wise of him. And it's, I think like good fathers are so um, paramount to weeding out the losers. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) (laughs) Just to put it bluntly. Um, And obviously there's more to it, like, than just he needs to have his own place because that can, like, come pretty easily for most guys who, you know, have a good job. Like, my dad, you know, evaluated his character, his work ethic, you know, is he a man of integrity? Is he honest? Is he trustworthy? Is he going to be gentle with me? Is he going to protect me? Just so many different things um, that he was looking for and that I was looking for. And I think also I was, for my age, like fairly um relationally and emotionally mature and spiritually mature at that time my parents did trust that I was also like making a wise decision and Jed was very involved with my family like we have known my in-laws now like since I was 13 so (laughs) so there's like quite a bit of like history there which really helps so Jed was very involved with Um, my family, he was always at the house hanging out, like, you know, making friends, you know, with my friends and, you know, getting to know even my extended family, like coming to family functions, like all these different things. So it was just like green flags, like everywhere. It like all just made sense. Um, so we got engaged. Well, he, Jed ended up moving out. My, my dad told him you need to be moved out before you can propose to her. And a month after he moved out, I don't know how long. Hey, Jed. <laughs> how, how long after you had the conversation with my dad, did you move out? So a few months after he had that conversation with my dad, my dad told him this is what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Jed had been moved out out of his place. Um, and he did not have a great job at the time, but he saved his butt off. <laughs> <laughs> to get his own place we started out in a studio very small beginnings um and then a month after he had his own place um he proposed to me 
And then, like I said, we had the seven month long engagement. Um, I feel like wedding planning was pretty easy. I feel like there were some things that were like a little stressful because we were like on a budget and we were trying to like DIY, like a lot of things, which obviously takes way more time because you're having to do it yourself, literally. Um, so, but yeah, that, that time period definitely flew by. Um, the wedding went really well. I think I only remember maybe one or two like small little blips that happened that were just so, it was just like super petty things. Like it didn't even come close to like ruining the day or like anything like that. Um, and like, I look back very fondly on that day and I remember, I like clearly remember, like vividly remember like a couple of different snapshots from that day of like when Jed and I were standing at the altar, like saying our vows, it was like a beautiful day. It was like in the springtime, we had an outdoor wedding and the sun was like, you know, glistening behind Jed and like all these different things. It was like blinding you girls like that were behind me. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. All the pictures are of me squinting. (laughs) All all of us like look, all of us on like the bridal side looked mad. It was really funny. Um, but it's just, it was, yeah, it was what it was. Um, so I have like that picture in my mind of like Jed in front of me at the altar and like the lighting and like everything, the trees, and it was just beautiful. And then another part of the day, which was like, we had like, we were in the middle of the reception and we had all of our, you know, friends and family, all of these people that we loved so dearly. And I remember we were just looking at each other and like, wow, like we are so blessed. Like this day went so well. Like it was better than we had imagined and like all these different things. It was just, I think it helped because we had a really great wedding planner, um, (laughs) um, which you had the same people as well. And it was just like a huge blessing um, to have them it really helped like tie together so many things, tie loose ends, like get all the detailed stuff that just like, it just gets so overwhelming if you're trying to do it by yourself. So anyway, day went so well. Um, Yeah. I have just super fond memories. And then during the engagement period, we did premarital counseling. We ended up not like finishing the, it was like a, I don't know what you would consider it. It was like a course or like a it was like a curriculum like it was a very it was pretty exhaustive from what I remember and we didn't even get to all that so we did I don't know I think maybe we got like three quarters of the way through and then we ended up finishing it like a little bit here and a little bit here like after we got married um just to kind of like you know it's just it's just good you know, to finish those things up, like even after you're married, like there's probably still things that needed to be discussed and all that stuff. And, um, really grateful for the elder at our church that did our premarital counseling. Um, yeah. And that's like about it. It wasn't like super eventful as far as like drama and like things (laughs) having gone wrong and, (laughs) and stuff like that. So yeah. Cool. It's about for my portion. How did he propose to you, Marcella? Um, at a young adults retreat in Hume Lake in California. Um at Hume Lake, yeah. He like took me on a hike and we were like on top of this rock thing, like overlooking the lake, and he proposed up there so it was it was really lovely um yeah I told him that I didn't want to have a public proposal because it's so embarrassing for me (laughs) (laughs) I was like please just like have it just be the two of us so he definitely took that to heart um but yeah that's yeah that's how he proposed it was very very cute yeah okay and we had all of our friends down at the bottom like waiting for us Oh, yeah. We were, like, dying. <laughs> and I, like, I thought for sure that you knew what was happening. And I had you were, no like, idea. just as shocked. I, I was like, flabbergasted. I were, okay, I, like, knew it was coming. 
Like, Judd gets so mad because he's like, I can't surprise you for any reason. Like, I am a very difficult person to surprise because I just, like, the only time, okay, the only time I was, like, actually recently very surprised was when you came by yourself to Tennessee and you brought my parents. You brought our parents (laughs) with you on the flight. That was a shock to me. I was not expecting that. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I knew he was going to propose that weekend. I, like, had a feeling. And I was like, oh, Gabby's probably in on it, like, for sure. And then we came back down the mountain, and you were, like, crying. And you were like. (laughs) It was crazy. It feels like a lifetime ago. It also feels like we were literally teenagers. (laughs) I know. I kind of was. You were. (laughs) Yeah. Like, legally, I was an adult. But, like. I was for sure still a teenager. I was 19. We got yeah. married a month after I turned 20. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. That was a long time ago. Nice. <laughs> okay. okay. What about you? So, yeah. So, I'm, I need to, like, gather my thoughts. Because I was, like, in Marcella and Jed world for a while <laughs> right now. And I'm, like, reminiscing <laughs> with you. And I was, like, with yeah. you the whole time. And I was just like, oh. It was so sweet. Feels like a whole lifetime ago, like I said. Um, Okay, so Ryan and I were basically like complete strangers to each other when we started dating. So we didn't have this, (laughs) we didn't have this long history where the family knows him or whatever. I dated uh, a lot of losers before I met my wonderful husband. Um, He's the best, and he's not a loser. Praise God. Um, praise the Lord. <laughs> so when him and I dated, we both were, it, it's so funny because at the time I would have said like, oh, like it was later in our life. It w- We were a lot older. And a lot of that has to do is because I left the house when I was newly 17 and I like became an adult, like with adult responsibilities very, very early in my life. And so when I started dating Ryan, I was like, I, I think I was 21 and a half because I turned 21. And then that next January, I started dating him. But to me, it felt like I had lived this long life before I met my husband. And I thought that I would never like actually meet somebody that was so wonderful. And I was praying that God would give me like a spiritual leader and um, the Lord more than answered my prayers in Ryan and Ryan just came out of nowhere for me. And so we dated for about a year before we got engaged and we knew pretty early on in our dating experience that we weren't just like messing around. Like we wanted (laughs) to date intentionally And I do have some, both of us have the same regrets of how we dealt with that or handled it. Um, But we, like, I feel like him and I had, like, different expectations of how that would go. I feel like I was, I knew very early on that I was going to marry him. And he didn't know as early on that he wanted to marry me, but he was like taking it maybe more seriously than I was. And it was just kind of like, ah, it was very difficult (laughs) at first, not like tons and tons of drama, but it was enough for it to be like, you know, there, the stakes were kind of high and we were kind of feeling the pressure a little bit. Yeah. Uh, We need to have a lot of things figured out. Um, Ryan also asked my dad if I could be his girlfriend, which was very sweet. No, man had ever done that before for me. And that was very sweet. Um, He also asked my dad if he could marry me. And my dad didn't have the same rules for Ryan, which Jed will always say is so unfair. But in Ryan's defense, he, so he didn't have to move out before asking me to marry him um, because he had more of an established job and he was finishing a bachelor's program. So, He had a little bit more stability and he was older and, Mm -hmm. you know, so I think that was probably why my dad kind of made that call with him. Yeah. But he did like right after we got um, engaged, he was like immediately looking for a place to live. So it happened Mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Um, So all that to say um, how, how he proposed to me. So I knew we went to look for a ring together, which a lot of people will say is super unromantic, but um, I 
like both him and I agreed that I I'm going to be wearing the ring and he had no idea like what to do with jewelry. Like <laughs> he's yeah. just like a, t- a typical man. That's like, I have no clue. Like if you're going to yeah. wear this forever, basically like, how are we going to, I don't know. So a lot of people may say my, that might be controversial, but I went, I knew that I was going to get proposed to because I picked the ring that I'm wearing. Um, yeah, same. We picked it together and we, talked about finances like it was very like everything was very planned um I didn't know when he was going to propose and I was getting very anxious for it to happen like after we finally bought the ring I was getting so anxious for it to happen and poor Ryan I was just like constantly like oh I feel like you're never going to propose and I was so stressed because I wanted to time it so like my best friend could fly out and I was just like ah it was just so much and again I totally self-sabotaged with my own anxiety (laughs) but he did propose to me and it was very sweet and I did not expect the day that he did it, I didn't expect it. Cause we went on dates a lot. And because we both had like adult money, we like went on really like fancy dates. You know, we didn't have a lot of responsibilities and I just can't believe how much we went, we went out like that. sounds like a dream. Yeah. (laughs) So, So anyway, we, um, he took me out to go to the cheesecake factory and he wanted to take me to this like little pond area. And I started getting like a little like, something's happening and he it wasn't unusual for him to want to take pictures of me because he was really into excuse me he was really into film cameras and film photos and he was even before we started dating so this was a big part of our relationship um and he wanted to take him to this place to take pictures and then he was like wanting to take pictures of me and that was like not weird but I thought something was off because he was so nervous he was so nervous and Ryan is like a nervous person in general but it was like falling apart kind of nervous you know and so yeah he proposed to me and we were by ourselves like it wasn't a public but like (laughs) but there were people at this pond at this lake place you know and so he proposed to me and obviously people saw him get on one knee and we had like people cheering for us at the other end of the the lake it was so precious and it was like our little private secret you know and them (laughs) yeah so my whole family except for you and jed were in texas or tennessee i can't remember they were across the country visiting family And I called them and they were all surprised. And it was just, it was really wonderful. Very beautiful. I love that day. I wish I could bottle up and and go revisit it anytime I want because it was just such a fun day for us. And we celebrated with Cheesecake Factory still. (laughs) Um, So sweet. I love that. So yeah, we, um, we were engaged for five months. I feel like Ryan's going to tell me that it wasn't, I, I think it was five months. Because I, you guys, I'm so bad. I can't remember what month we got engaged. Like, I have it grilled into my brain, like, when we started dating and when we got married. And everything else is, like, a blur to me. So, I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure we were engaged for five months. Um, I think we could have gotten away with three months. Because it really only took three months to actually plan the wedding. And to mm-hmm. do everything because the first couple months were kind of like it was really casual, and I was just kind of like being a fiance and stuff like that. And I went and bought my wedding dress in the first couple months, but everything else, like game time, didn't start happening until three months before. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, um, as far as preparation for the wedding went, um, it was okay. So in our situation. Um, my my family's contribution to our wedding was their house and their yard because we got par- we got married at my parents' place. Um, my grandparents pitched in a little bit, and Ryan's mom did all the flowers. So we had like some of a group effort of people helping us, but the majority of our wedding we paid for ourselves. And I kind of have some regrets about that, which I'll talk about later on. Because I had a pretty hefty savings and I basically drained it all for this wedding. And I think I only had like a thousand mm-hmm. left. Um, but like we really, we really, really, really wanted to have as many people 
that we could there and we wanted to feed all of them. And those are huge expenses. Um, even though like the venue, you know, the venue and the flowers were taken care of. And I can't remember, I think my gra grandparents just gave us cash for a few things. And my grandma bought me my wedding jewelry, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, but most of it, you know, we, we had to pay for ourselves. And so a lot of the wedding plan, like we had wonderful wedding planners. We paid for the wedding plan. We paid for the dessert. We paid for food, everything, all of the decorations, um, besides the flowers. And then we wanted to give gifts to our musicians that we hired. And then also the, um, the pastor that officiated. So, um, so we were, yeah, so we were engaged for five months and Ryan's going to correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I feel like is, that sounds, I think that sounds right. I yeah. Think that sounds, it's right. Yeah. Um, and as far as like spiritual preparation or how I prepared to be a wife, I did not prepare to be a wife at all. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like in some ways, a lot of the jobs that I had were kind of preparing me to be like a nurturer and a caretaker. Mm -hmm. um, but as far there's so many things that I wish I would have done to prepare myself practically. And we're going to get into that practical stuff in the next episode uh, that really, I feel like would have set me up for, to not like completely feel like I'm drowning or feel like I'm so lost. I don't know how to be a wife. I don't know how to be a homemaker. I'm really scared. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, Especially because at that time, right before we got married, I was living at my parents' house. Um, even though there was like a three year stint that I wasn't living at my parents' house, I did end up coming back and I lived with them for, I believe two years before I got married to Ryan. So um, I really wish that I had spent more time um, preparing to be a wife and not just planning the wedding. Um, as far as spiritual preparation and like emotional preparation, Ryan and I did do premarital counseling and um, it was okay. Like there was a lot of uh, good things that came from it and things that I'm thankful for. Um, but I feel like we would have really benefited from something a little bit more structured, kind of like what you said that you and Jed did. You did a curriculum. Ours was more like counseling, like yeah, giving like and talking. Yeah, giving like general yeah. principles. And I've talked about before in our biblical submission episode that one of the times there was the wife of the person that was counseling us was also there. And I was basically like begging her to tell me how to be a submissive wife. And she basically said something along the lines of like, I can't tell you how to submit to your own husband. Every husband is different, you know? And that was kind of like the summary. And I was just like, so lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and I know now what I, if I was her in that position, I know now the things that I would have <laughs> told me, things. would have told me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, yeah, I feel like there's parts of that where I do have like, man, I really wish that we had more structure in a premarital counseling. Um, we did have a couple post-marital, um, like kind of like what you and Jed had, which was very helpful. I highly recommend that. Um, I always tell people that. <laughs> um, but as far as, yeah, preparation, that's basically the extent of it. So before we get into like what we would do different, um, what we talked about our engagements and ours were fairly short compared to the average, many, yeah, the yeah. average, you know, in, in, you know, modern society. Um, I feel like right now the average, I mean, it's like one to two years or even more. I've heard of people having like a three year engagement. What do we think about long engagements? And so, okay. So let's be on the same page about what we think is long because <laughs> I would constant. I think now, okay, me being like super radicalized, right? I think my engagement was too long. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think it's like the seven months. Like if if I were getting engaged like right now, with knowing what I know and that sort of thing, I think seven months would still be like it's like a cap. Like oh, that yeah. is like on the like the way longer end. Like if you can do it way sooner, then you probably should. Yes. I I think that people now, like with a with a worldly worldview, think of engagement as kind of just like an ex like the next phase in your relationship. <laughs> and this phase is kind of like 
there's not really like a time limit on this phase. You know, it's like, oh, we're mm-hmm. fiancés now and we hope to get married one day. But if you have a biblical worldview, engagement is not just a phase. It's like a, a time period where you have committed to marry one another and you are making the preparations necessary to get married. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think anything beyond that is excessive, unwise, <laughs> just truly unwise yeah. and, and borderline like wrong, you know, like. You guys can come for me in the DMs, <laughs> but it's like, if we, if you are, if you are committing to marry somebody and you're like, I'm going to marry this person, what, what else needs to happen in that year or however long period that is not wedding planning or spiritual yeah. preparation, Yeah, then you shouldn't be engaged. That's kind of like where I'm at now. It's yeah. like. You're not you're not ready to get married then. Yeah. You know? And I I do think it's kind of I don't know. It's kind of silly to me like when 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 people are like, "Well, you know, she just needs to finish up school first or like he just needs to finish up school or like, you know, we have we're wanting this certain type of like like living situation like we want to be in our own we want to be able to buy a house first and like all the it's like mm-hmm. mm, okay what if that means you're engaged for like two years then yeah like we can't be naive enough to think that we're not crossing a lot of boundaries in that time because yeah <laughs> like it's it's just we can't be that ignorant and no. naive to think that we and can another thing have that, that trouble. I, I was having a conversation recently with a good friend about this. Like, if if you are Christian and you believe what the Bible says about men and women, husbands and wives, and the biblical roles, it would be improper for a man to start essentially functioning as your husband and as your head. If you are not married. Yeah. So if he's already behaving like your husband and you're, you know, becoming a submissive woman and he's leading you and loving you and you're like learning the respect. And there's some of that, a very microscopic part of that does happen while you're, it just naturally happens when you're dating for the purpose of marriage. Mm -hmm. But you like it just ends up crossing a like blurring a lot of lines a lot of things I agree. where he's now acting as your authority but he has not committed to you before god yes um yeah. so yeah and that, i, I and that can be very mentally confusing especially for the woman yes. i feel like because women naturally, I know, like, wow, so controversial. We naturally want to be led. And so when you have this guy that you love and you're attracted to, and it's like, oh, like, wow, it's like giving everything, you know, that I wanted it to give. <laughs> but you're still in that, like, engagement period. I think we'll probably talk about this more in in, in part two. Yeah. You're still in that engagement period. It, it, like, kind of creates this facade in your relationship that there's something there that actually isn't. And I agree. It really does blur a lot of lines and it ends up being inappropriate. Like, yes. I don't think that... Um engaged couples should be doing devotionals together whoa whoa what like, is this crazy is that bad am i not allowed to say that i don't know i don't know maybe explain this, this is an opinion i'm not saying like oh wow you this is sinful i think just from my experience and also from having like counseled other young women observing a lot of those things and also talking to older women like much much older women than me about what they've observed as well that there's like this we're we're getting too spiritually intimate with each other too soon Mm. and we think that just like oh well if we're if we're betrothed (laughs) 
like, you know, well, we've committed to it thus far. So it's like, what, what makes it like, what about reading the Bible together? What about him praying over me? It's like so wrong. And it's like, I think when you, okay, when you get married and your husband does those things for you and you as a wife realize how powerful that is in your life, you realize, wow, I had no right to that when we were engaged. Anyway, my tangent's over. I think we'll probably talk about that more in part two, (laughs) unless Gabby's like, freaked out and doesn't want to <laughs> we just won't touch that anymore i don't know i thought me saying i thought what i said earlier was crazy but i don't know that was crazy Marissa. i mean i don't disagree like it is it's a very intimate thing it is very intimate and that's now i'm like having all these like i'm having an existential crisis right now like ryan I and i it- did that and i think that that like catapulted our relationship into so I'm wow I don't even wow <laughs> yeah, I need to process this and I'm like I don't I mean I guess that like that whole thing can be a generalization but like obviously this is where having an elder involved is so important because and I'm not talking about oh like um The guy who, like, doesn't really know us super well. He's just some random pastor that we decided to... Like, this is somebody who needs to have intimately known you or your husband and your spiritual walk and your history. And, like, that is... In an ideal situation, it would be an elder of that sort who has that kind of relationship or friendship in your life um, where they can kind of scope out what's happening between the two of you during that time period and say, whoa, 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 we got to pump the brakes a little bit. Like this is what you're doing is not bad. It's just a bad time. Like you Mm. need to pump the brakes. (laughs) Let's wait until we're where we need to be in order for that to be actually beneficial. Yeah. So, and I, again, I'm not saying across the board, like, wow, if you guys were reading the Bible together, like, you're no, insane. but like, you're you're no, no, no. you're you're talking about like this like private like devotional, very intimate, very like he's it's not like it's not like yeah he's head, leading like you, you were saying acting as a head when he is not even there for you at that point. My brain is, I'm taxed. <laughs> this is taxing. <laughs> okay so while we're talking about this we'll wrap it up with things that we would do differently we've kind of touched a little bit on it but just for more specifics i know that my husband is on the same page with me about this i regret ever being alone with him like not alone, like him and I alone at a restaurant, or him and I alone, yeah, like, like privately, talk, like yeah. alone. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. And I'm sorry, I have yet to meet the person that's so sanctified that is not so in love with somebody and is not tempted by lust. Yeah. When you're alone, like I'm sorry, I, I would like to meet them. They, yeah, you know, they're fully the sanctified. It's very true. <laughs> like, it's very you know? true. And so we, you know, God, God did save us from you know a lot of heartache that we could have had, but we did push ourselves, push the boundaries of what is, yeah. what is pure, what is good, what. And it, do- I'm sorry, it does affect your marriage. It yeah. does. It may sound extreme, but if I were totally honest myself, I wish we never exceeded more than like a peck or even a kiss at all. Like we indulged ourselves and we were not using self-control and we have regrets. We both have regrets about it. And when we talk about it, it grieves us because it, it really does like it affected us and it does affect your marriage. It's not like when you get married 
to that person and you're like, oh, I'm just going to get, I'm going to get married to them anyway. Like who cares? It's not Mm -hmm. like that's all just going to go away because before you were married, it was sinful. And yeah. So I, I do have both Ryan and I have regrets about that. We've repented, you know, to each other because I sinned against him. He sinned against, we sinned against each other. Mm -hmm. We sinned against God. Um, How I would, how I would, you know, I wish we would have handled our relationship with more, with more eyes on us. I wish we had more eyes on us, Mm -hmm. but because we were older and because we were trying to like, we were fighting the fight of purity alone. And that is not a good thing to do. It is so Mm -hmm. isolating and you're going to fail. And so I'm going to talk, we're going to talk more about that in the next episode, but, um, and then anything I would do different. I know also Ryan agrees with this. I, I think that we could have been engaged three months tops and we could have had the same exact wedding with the same exact people (laughs) and everything would have been the same. (laughs) It would have just been shorter and a lot less tempting. (laughs) Um, And I also, even though like, yeah, we had, we had a, a, a beautiful wedding with every single person that we loved was there. Like we did, we totally like, we're so blessed. Um, and also having a, a bigger wedding, like truly meant like people might think that I'm like cheap or crass for saying this, but it, people gave us a lot of gifts. Like we did not have to pay one dime during our, um, honeymoon it was wonderful yeah, we, we had the yeah. best time ever and so part like part of having a bigger wedding is you know you get a lot of gifts and people people are so generous especially Chris, christians are so generous when you get married like and they come to your wedding they're just so generous because they're so excited for you you know um but I do, I do now, if I could do it all over, I wish that I would have saved our money that we had to maybe pay off some debt, <laughs> mm. um, to, you know, get us started a little bit better with certain things. Um, and so I feel like I could have, we could have had a much sw- smaller wedding, maybe even uh, not on an elopement, but kind of a low key elopement where it's like just into just immediate family or just a few, like maybe like 50 people, if that, you know, Mm -hmm. and then our officiate and we could have had the same, you know, could have had our musicians still, we could have had, you know, this whole thing, but it could have been a lot smaller, which would have been a lot cheaper. Um, And we could have saved a lot more money and we still would have had a wonderful time or do I've heard people doing this, which is such a great idea is you have your, your um, actual ceremony is Everybody can come. The whole world can come. But then the reception is more intimate and you only have a certain amount of people, which some people may might say that that is, you know, that's rude or whatever. But I think that it's smart <laughs> because <laughs> weddings are expensive. Yeah. And, and I feel like if, if you actually care to go to the actual wedding, like you'd go to the ceremony and who cares if you didn't get invited? Like I am not offended if somebody invites me to their oh, ceremony yeah, no. and not the reception. Like, yeah. <laughs> thank you for letting me come to the wedding <laughs> like, Yeah, because it's, it's expensive and it's a privilege, you know? So it's not, a, I don't have a right to come to your reception. So that's what I feel like I would have done differently. And one other like teensy little thing that I would have done differently is I wish I only had my sister in my wedding party. And that's for a few reasons. Not, not that I don't completely love and adore the women that were in my wedding party, because I still have love for each of them so much, but I had the blessing of having so many friends, you know, at that time in my life. And it was very, very, very hard to like nail down and wean down to only like Mm -hmm. four women. And so it was very stressful to like, to ask one person and not the other. And it's just like, ah, yeah. it just like kills me or like, I'm not friends with that girl anymore. I should have asked this person instead. And it, it just, ugh, it just, I appreciate when I see people like only have one just to have their maid of honor. And I'm like, that just saves so much drama and saves so much regret. It yeah. saves a ton of regret. Um, and also, my husband like is not like a huge like extrovert with a ton of besties and so like poor guy i'm like saying like i need seven bridesmaids and he's like i got three friends <laughs> like, what am i supposed to do <laughs> you know what i mean so i feel like all around 
if I could do it all over again, I would have just had my sis and my ride or die. And that would have been it. And, you know, it would have saved a whole lot of drama. (laughs) All right. What about you? Anything you would do differently? Um, I would agree with the, like, you don't realize how easy it is to like cross the boundaries, especially when you have, if you've been dating for a long time, I feel like this can go for like, if you decide to like date for a super long time, unnecessarily. I also don't recommend that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah. And along with like having a super long engagement, which again, like our engagement only being seven months in comparison to like the average American couple um, is really short. But um, I think for what the purpose was of like, what are, why are we getting engaged? It's not necessarily just to like have the wedding. It's so that we can like, again, figure out what needs to be done in order for us to like transition into being married. So um yeah, like Jed and I also like have regrets as far as like um you know loving and respecting each other enough to have the self-control that was needed in order to keep those, you know, those boundaries clear and to remain pure in our relationship. And I do agree it does like do damage and i think it's hard even when you're newly married to see Mm -hmm. like what exactly that damage would be um but there are natural consequences that happen Mm -hmm. that it's just it's so hard to like pinpoint like well this is exactly what's going to happen to you right right because like i really just can't you can't really say like specifics about what you know Uh, if i was like in a one-on-one conversation with a woman and she was like why should i not do like what what could it lead to and it's like oh girl like let me tell you yeah (laughs) it could lead your marriage to some very very dark places that Mm -hmm. you don't want to be in and you don't realize it until you've been you know married for a certain amount of time and you're like whoa this is way harder than i thought it was going to be and i don't think we realize like um the consequences of sexual impurity will leak out into every other aspect of your relationship it's not just the purity aspect it is so many different things because it is so powerful so never never think that you're um exempt or that you're the exception to because we all kid ourselves that we're, we're going to be the exception and it's going to end up fine and all these different things it's like we should take those warnings in scripture very seriously because they're there for a reason um so yeah that is one thing and then also like i don't know as far as like the wedding like engagement like Like I said, I, like, look back on those times, like, very fondly. I, maybe I wish that, you know, um, like you were saying, like, somebody tell me how to be a submissive wife and, like, how to (laughs) talk respectfully to my husband. And, like, those things were discussed, but I think it was more like I needed not just an elder, but also another woman who was in my life and, like, in my home. And seeing how I was, like, communicating with Jed or interacting with him and being like, oh, no, 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 no. You (laughs) need to stop that (laughs) right now. (laughs) Because I think that would have saved us so much heartache in the first couple of years because of me just being sinful. Um, Word. (laughs) And then, like like you were saying, I I do wish that I had just had you in my bridal party. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure we're not the only people that look oh, no. back I, that I know it's a very common thing and it's so hard because like you can't foresee things going wrong in those relationships because like there's obviously there has to be a good reason why you've chosen them to be in your bridal party and like I really did think at that time like wow these are my besties for life like this is it like these are my girls and like all this stuff 
And like, you know, those relationships kind of ended or simmered out, I guess, um, for various reasons. Um, but you just like, I mean, you can't really like predict that that is going to happen. But I do agree. I think it is more common than we probably realized. <laughs> That it's like, wow, I don't talk to any of those people anymore. Or like, you know, especially after you have kids, like, man, I don't talk to any of those people that I was friends with, like, before I had children. And it's just like, it does kind of have a way, like, when you are pursuing those things that are good and right, and for the right intentions and the good reasons, it does have a way of kind of weeding out people, um, which is sad, because you, you know, always wish that you can keep those relationships and um, yeah, keep those friendships going and you do what you can. But then, you know, at a certain point you just have to like let them be what they're going to be and let them go. So. Yeah, I agree. I think one more note that I thought about while you were talking about the purity issue, one thing that I would tell somebody um, if they were asking me why, like, I'm going to marry them next month or, you know, that sort of attitude. Um, You have to practice and exercise sexual self-control in marriage. Mm -hmm. Various different reasons. Mm -hmm. If you cannot (laughs) exercise that sort of self-control and restraint and order that when you're dating, engaged, it's going to be very hard in marriage and i can speak from experience in this situation like i again fighting the fight of purity alone very hard and on top of that in my situation i had years of you know sin that i was i am still reaping the consequences of um but if you are if you are in a godly relationship with a godly man if you love him like you say you do, like I said I did <laughs> with mm-hmm. my husband, I we should have practiced that self-restraint, that self-control, because you need a ton of that in different different seasons of life for various reasons in your marriage. It's not like when you get married, it's a free-for-all, self-control comes so easily, you know, yeah. all of these things. You must work and kill that sin before if you're able to if you are able to that is a gift that is a gift from Mm -hmm. god um is there anything you wanted to add to that um no cool all right well we got a part two coming for you guys next week more practical things this was more kind of our story things that we loved things that we wish we could have done differently and um We're very, very blessed to look on memories of being a girlfriend and being a fiance with our husbands now with so much fondness because, you know, God really blessed our relationships with them. Um, Oh my gosh, now I have to see. (laughs) Wow. That has never happened on the history of our podcast, I'm pretty sure. Never. 90, it only took 98 episodes, you guys, for me to sneeze on the podcast. Um, We'll talk to you guys next week. And we'll see you next week to talk about part two of preparing to be a wife. Bye, guys. Bye.